The craft beverage scene is brewing in Reno, Tahoe. And on this episode of Tahoe Life, you're going to get a taste of everything. On today's show, we're actually helping craft a home brew of our own, and we're actually going to jump on the wine production line and even shake things up with some craft cocktails. So raise a toast and a cheers to you for this episode of Tahoe Life, drinkable Reno Tahoe. Cheers. The craft beer scene has gained tremendous momentum throughout the United States, and Reno Tahoe is keeping up with the trends. Sedalis Lake Tahoe Brewery opened their doors not too long ago, and today they're inviting you and I into their beer lab to help craft a home brew of our own. All right, we're here with head brewer Steve, and we're about to uh, help you get this process started. All right, so we're getting ready to mash in here. We're gonna pour our barley. All right, so just grab this paddle. You got it, give us a little stir. Okay. We are pouring in all of our barley, mixing with hot water, and converting all of the starches in the grain into sugars that can be fermented into alcohol later in the process. Stirring my witch's brew. This is definitely a lot thicker. Who needs the gym when you have beer? Uh, right, it's <laughs> a workout, yeah. Uh, we're just about at the right temp, so we're gonna go ahead and close the lid and let this guy do its work here. So, we're gonna take a walk into the fermentation room with Chris and go get a couple samples of some of the beers we've had brewing already. And now what is that brew that we're making over there? So right now we're brewing our OB Amber, uh, which stands for the original brew. It's the first brew we brewed in this building. So you can kind of taste it at this point. It's very sweet, so the smell. So it still has all its sugar in it, so it's yet to be beer. Oh wow! It's really, really sweet. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And you can kind of taste the hop mm -hmm. a little bit, but at this point the sugar is really overpowering everything else that's in it. So we're going to pull a last sample. Uh, this is a sour ghost beer. This is a new beer for us. So it's, That's going to be good. How mm -hmm. refreshing. Yeah, it's nice and sour. It's light. It doesn't have a bunch of alcohol in it. I'm ready to taste. Yeah, let's Enough go. of this talk. I know, this doesn't have enough alcohol in it. Let's go get some. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your beers and what makes yours different. Every one of these beers has a different flavor and what we're trying to do is find something that everyone's gonna like. What is this one right here? So that one's actually the OB Amber. That's what you were working on oh, earlier. Cool. Yeah, so this is what your beer is gonna end up like when it gets to the end. This is what you need to drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a toast to you for turning your love of beer into a success. We're gonna keep tasting. You watch this next segment of another local brewery that made its way into Tahoe. Beer is awesome. Beer is awesome. You're awesome. How can you go wrong? <laughs> it's been said a million times, but it really is a blend of art and science and craft all coming together. And at the end of it, you end up with a product that, that's delicious and makes people happy. I started making beer because well, I was 19 and I liked drinking beer. It quickly you know, became a hobby gone wild, and I just really enjoyed that process of conceiving a beer, making the beer, and then watching people enjoy that beer and tell me what they thought of it. That cycle continues today at Alibi. We came up with the name Alibi Ale Works, mostly because, in short, Alibi means it, it's a story that checks out. It's the real deal. It was first about finding the right building for a brewery. It took us well over a year. We wanted to create the Tahoe Basin's first production brewery. Beer made here in Tahoe with Tahoe water by a couple local guys just working hard trying to keep it real, and then make enough of it to really saturate the market and provide a local beer that people can be proud of. We're trying to cast a wide net, so we have the ability to play around and make a really wide range of styles and kind of see what sticks. A general underpinning theme of the beers we're making is that the bulk of our core beer is to be lower in alcohol and really drinkable, that fit the Tahoe active lifestyle. Beers that are pintable, you can have a couple pints and still remember your name and not fall off your bar stool. So we're trying to make beer for drinking. Beer flavor has a lot to do with yeast and healthy yeast. People can expect a lot of variety from Alibi and a, and a rotating cast of available beers. The overall space, I want to make more of a communal environment. 
everything is shared areas. There's no real individual spots to sit in here. So you're kind of forced to meet a new friend. We're doing our best to be a low footprint brewery wherever we can, both in the materials we use to build out the brewery as well as where our, our waste products like spent grain go, as well as using water. We're right next to a giant lake, but we still capture and try to reuse water in the brewery as much as we can. My hope was to really create a, you know, a great place for people to hang out in, just have a great beer, meet friends, and uh, just really enjoy themselves. I feel really, really lucky that I get to you know, get out of bed in the morning and be here creating awesome beer out of Tahoe water. It's been a dream and it's a little bit surreal that it's being realized now. Don't you go anywhere because after the break, you and I are switching our sips to vino. Only on this episode of Tahoe Life, drinkable Reno Tahoe. Hey you Tahoe Life fans, welcome back. You made it just in time because we're about to hop on the production line here at Tahoe Ridge Winery, Nevada's first commercial winery, which means from growing the grapes to processing the grapes, bottling the wine, and even tasting it, they do it all. So let's roll out those award-winning wines. I'm here with Carl here at the Tahoe Ridge Winery Wine Production Center. You know everything wine, everything that has to do with wine. How I can do. I help you get these bottles out to them so they're <laughs> well, drinking it? Teach you. So your first thing, you're just gonna grab one up and you just slide it right in until you hear the click. Ha ha, I got my first one. Oop, there we go. Wait, did I wanna do that? Hold on to it. You gotta let it do its thing. Oops. See, that's the machine. Okay. That's another one to drink right there. <laughs> Everyone I mess up, I get to keep. All right. <laughs> we gotta tighten the foils down on it, okay. so then it's harder for the air to get to it. There you go. Good. And that's 100% correct? Yes. So now that you're labeled yep. and you got your foils on, we're gonna move on down to the taper. <laughs> I thought it was a lot stronger. Watch the fingers. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Quick on the toes. All right. These are all of our mistakes, so you can deliver them to my house. Right. Just pull your truck around the back there, and we'll be on our way. <laughs> well, I'm excited to actually taste some of the wine. So yes. Well, let's go do that. Way. So we got our 2012 here, and it is 100% Frontenac. I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, it's its own varietal, is what that means. And its own varietal means it's its own kind. Being in the high desert, pine and sage grow in our soil. So this is what you'll taste in our wine. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. That is a combination of a whole bunch of different flavors. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me help out today with production, seeing all that you do here. Cheers to you. Cheers. It's a tough job. You keep watching this next segment of another place where you can go wine tasting in Tahoe. Visit South Lake Tahoe's newest wine and coffee bar, Revive. We have a wide variety of wines here, including our house label, which is Boger from Placerville. We offer champagne, true champagne from France. We have sparkling wine, we have rosé, and we have a wide variety of reds, everything from Barbera to Pinot Noir to Zinfandel, Cabernet, and a few blends. My name's Richard, I'm a wine connoisseur, and I've decided to come on over and, and uh, check this place out. There's a vast variety of whites to reds to all kinds of uh, beautiful wines from the El Dorado Hills to Paso Robles to even a few from Sonoma. It's a wonderful wine. One of many, by the way, to be mentioned. I have tried a few on the menu. For a cup of Joe or local glass of vino, visit Revive, South Shore's newest hotspot. I chose to add wine to the menu because when you're opening a coffee cafe in a town like this, it doesn't make sense uh, financially to close the doors at three or four o'clock in the afternoon when the coffee sales die down. It makes sense to add something that would, um, would carry us into the evening and wine seemed like the perfect fit. Coffee, wine, chocolate, little food. I don't think it gets any better than that. I hope you're getting thirsty because after this quick break, we're gonna mix things up in a cocktail class. This is really good. 
On Tahoe Life, we've crafted a home brew, we've jumped on the wine production line, and now it's definitely five o'clock somewhere. I'm going to show you one of my favorite spots here in South Lake Tahoe for happy hour, so let's taste what they do best. We're here at the Loft Tahoe, Heavenly Village's new restaurant, lounge, bar area with Jenna, who is the best of the best in terms Thank of you. bartending goes. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me a little bit about the Loft. I mean, it's a completely different type of experience, vibe, ambiance than I think anything that Tahoe has actually seen. Oh, you're absolutely right. The greatest thing about the Loft, um, we do so many things here. We do magic shows at night, um, two shows a night almost every night. Uh, we bring in burlesque on Wednesdays every once in a while, which is a lot of fun for adults to check out. Um, we have the lounge here. We play music. We bring a DJ in on the weekends. With mixology and cocktails, mm -hmm. I know that bartenders like to kind of think of things on their own. And so True. I'd like to challenge you to make a Tahoe life cocktail. Tahoe life cocktail. Okay. Yeah. So when people watch the episode, you know, if you're feeling fancy, you know, and, and Jenna's here or any other bartender, mm -hmm. I'm sure you could ask for it and, and see what you guys come up with. Absolutely. Up for okay. the challenge. Let's do it. So with your creativeness, what do you think a Tahoe life cocktail concoction is going to look like? Okay. Or taste? Well, I know that your colors are blue and yellow, so we're going to go with something that's blue and yellow. I know you're a vodka drinker. <laughs> Um, we also are going to feature our Tahoe Blue Vodka. Start with some fresh blueberries, so just a little bit in there, and some simple syrup. Just a splash. Gonna get our muddler out. Your favorite thing. Your favorite tool. I noticed it was a little aggressive. You were very aggressive. I was like, she's angry with her boyfriend or something today. I don't know. We're gonna add some fresh lemon juice. So there's your yellow color, and it'll make it a pretty color as well. Um, we're also going to use a little bit of pomegranate liqueur, so it's going to be kind of like a blueberry pomegranate lemonade, kind of staying uh, refreshing for the summertime as well, since it is probably the hottest day in Tahoe today as we're standing out here in the sun. And then we're going to add about two ounces of the Tahoe Blue Vodka. So the great thing about Tahoe Blue Vodka as well is a portion of the proceeds from this do go to preserving our lake and keeping Tahoe Blue. So now we're going to add some ice to it, give it a good shake of course get everything incorporated in here. So we'll shake it. We're gonna just strain over top. That looks good. Get a couple of the blueberries in there. So you're gonna have to tell me what you think. Here we go. Okay. The Tahoe Life cocktail no made pressure. by Jenna. <laughs> that is really, oh, really good. You. Next time you visit the loft, make sure you order the Tahoe Life cocktail. And coming up next, is a way that you can cruise on the lake and also enjoy a cool beverage as well. What's next? Martinis? Oh, let's do it. <laughs> you want to <laughs> learn? <laughs> it's Drew with Getaway Reno Tahoe, and today we're at Camp Richardson Historic Resort Marina. I'm bringing all the friends and family aboard the world-famous Rum Runner Cruise. Hey, Drew, look what I got. Where'd you get that? I got on the boat. It's the Rum Runner Cruise. Let's go. Doo -doo. All aboard. The dock ropes were drawn, the skipper fired up the engines, and the Rum Runner Cruise was on its way for its tour along Lake Tahoe's gorgeous shoreline into Emerald Bay and back. Kids of all ages can enjoy the sights and even be back in time for dinner. The Rum Runner Cruise is an intimate cruising experience. There's nothing like yachting on a 55-foot boat in open blue waters listening to the wind and the waves. A fun opportunity for the kids, like my little buddy Dee found out, was to take the helm and guide the yacht towards Emerald Bay. This kid had mad skills, and I think he'll be a captain one day. Megan, however, could be found on the bow of the boat reenacting every scene from Titanic. Within minutes, everybody on board felt like family, and my new sister Jo? Well, her and I were in a daunting conversation about which direction was north, a topic that always comes up when you're on the water. Jo also wanted me to mention the boats available for private charters. This boat comes complete with one of the most amazing engineering marvels of all time the Rum Runner Drink Machine, an endless supply of one of the tastiest drinks in Tahoe, and as a matter of fact, has been voted best cocktail by Tahoe locals and visitors year after year. And kids, don't you worry, there are plenty of drinks and snacks for you too. As we pulled into Emerald Bay and off the port bow, or is it the starboard bow, you get water level views of Viking Holmes Castle and Tea House Island. A couple of Rum Runners later and we have arrived, Megan. We are here in one of the most beautiful places 
in the world. Our friends, our family, the ducks, the geese, everybody having a great time on the Rum River Cruise today. We've got Viking Homes Castle, we've got the Tea House, and Emerald Bay is just beautiful. We're gonna spin this baby around and the cruise continues. Roaring Eagle Falls can be seen in the distance and the scenic shoreline of Lake Tahoe is scattered with kayaks and campers. The cameras were flashing in all directions and I felt like I was on the Super Bowl of all cruises. Upon arrival at the docks, a $3 Beacon Buck was given to every adult passenger. Now we can head off the boat and straight to the Beacon Bar and Grill for appetizers, dinner, and of course, more of the world famous Rum Runners. We are back at dock. The Rum Runner Cruise has come to a completion and what an experience, Megan. We had such a great time and now it's time to take all of our friends and family, the whole crew, to the Beacon Bar and Grill to use our Beacon Buck. That's right, live music. Great food at the Beacon, one of the hottest spots in Lake Tahoe. We'll see ya. When you're here at the Loft, make sure you check out their new game room with oversized checkers, Jenga, and cornhole. After the break coming up, we're going to take this happy hour mobile. <laughs> you're tuning back into Tahoe Life, and I hope you've had some fun because I gotta tell ya, it's just getting started. You and I are about to experience Tahoe's newest attraction. It's a pedaled powered party on Tahoe's bike bus. This is a great way to meet new people, but also tour the area, see new bars and restaurants, and just some good time fun. You and I are some of the first to test it out, so let's go, cause that ride you're waiting. When was it that you decided I want to own a bike bus? Um, it's been about a year in the making. When I finally figured out what I wanted to do, I had a lot of different ideas, and this one just kind of was the most fun that I rode. We pedal around from bar to bar and get cocktails at each stop. There looks to be a whole bunch of cool little features. Can you show me? Because I bet that enhances the experience. Sure. I see some LED lights. <laughs> so it's a 15 passenger bike bus. We have 10 pedaling seats as well as five non-pedaling. There's a stereo system. We have LED lighting up top as well as down below the carriage. There's a tap system that's ready for private parties at the moment. Are you guys ready to go? Yeah! <laughs> They're thirsty. Let's do this. And we're off. We need some people power. We're off to our first location. Let's go. <laughs> You know what this bike bus is? Do you know? It's the bee's knees. This is the best way to see Lake Tahoe! The experience is off the chain! <laughs> This is probably the newest, funnest adventure for people that are visiting or even that live here. I bet you're just out with all your friends and, you know, it's just a mobile party. It's a good time. You get to see the place, you get to drink, you get to stop off at places that I've never been to before that now I can discover and then come back to again. I highly recommend it. It's a really fun new activity. Ecotainment, then you're gonna love these next pieces coming out produced by the North Lake Tahoe Visitors Authority of their Ale Trail, where they partner human powered sports with a brewery. Here we go. Pedal faster! The Flume Trail on the east side of the lake was originally built to carry water to Virginia City during the Comstock mining days. When I moved up to the lake, I wanted a cool loop to ride, and I kind of went exploring, found the old flume, and decided to clear a little bit of the debris off it so people could ride it. And that was some 30 years ago now. 
and it turned in to be uh, you know, quite the scenic trail. Never thought it would get as popular as it is, but it's the best views of Tahoe at Tahoe. One of the great things about ending a ride here at our cafe in the bike shop is we've got a few different really nice beers on tap. We've got a great selection in the fridge. Plus, we've got a really awesome deck where you can kind of sit down, you know, have a chat with maybe some of the locals, find out where you might want to go riding tomorrow. And in the States, you don't find many cafes at the end of a trail and on the outskirts of town, not even in mountain towns. So we kind of tried to cater it toward active people that like to be outside, that like to hike, that like to ride, that like to ski, snowshoe, depending on the time of year. Our mantra at our bike shop, like I think a lot of places in North Shore, is we're just here to help people have the best day they can at Lake Tahoe. That finishes this episode of Tahoe Life. I hope you enjoyed learning about the craft, beverage, and spirit scene that has taken off here in the Reno Tahoe area. Now it's time for you to go taste and enjoy it for yourself. Be sure to do it responsibly and only if you're 21 and up. Connect with me and let me know about your Tahoe Life experience.